Hi everyone, welcome to a video about a painting which I could not get to work. Let's have a look at why. My name's Tom, thanks for joining me in the studio. So why would you want to watch a video of a painting that didn't work? So painting is hard, it can be incredibly frustrating, it's tough. There are many of my paintings that do not work, so hopefully that alone makes you feel a little bit better. But secondly, we all get stuck at times throughout a painting, possibly even multiple times, and we even get stuck to the point where the painting just simply won't work. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through a time-lapse version of this painting, and I'm gonna talk you through my thought process using the five basic principles of painting from these recent previous videos to try and show how I was analyzing the painting in order to get unstuck when I did get stuck, uh, in order to push it through to at least getting it finished. And in the end, even though for me it didn't work because it's gone a little bit too heavy in places, it's gone very overworked in places as I've tried to kind of get towards the end of the painting, there are still elements which I like. And most importantly, I learned a huge amount from it and I'm gonna conclude with all of that at the end. Okay guys, so I'm not really gonna talk through the colors and the materials too much. Uh, it's my usual kind of colors. I'm going to talk from more through the process and my thought process as well. So really happy with the drawing at this stage. It all felt good. I felt like the composition was good. So those are kind of the first two aspects. I spent time getting my perspective right. My first aim was to leave whites of the page where I wanted them and to get some nice flowing washes, but not go too dark. Let all the colors run together, but keep it light because we can always go darker. We can always get rid of the whites of the page. I'm just gonna keep it very, very simple. Also knowing that it's gonna dry lighter and everything just kind of soft and blurry. I know that I can make the colors a little bit brighter than I want as well, because they're subdue. I'm trying to keep it warm in the buildings, even though I may come over with some cool shadows. So kind of all good at this stage, really happy with it at this stage, give it a blast with the hair dryer, make sure it's bone dry before we go on. So now I'm coming in with the, the second wash and I'm starting to push in the shadows. I want to push the shadows into these buildings to trap the light on the water in the distant building uh, and really make a lot of the shadows, I really try and push them. And what I'm trying to do is a lot of wet into wet work because I want to keep the shadows very soft. I'm going to slowly push in the darks as those new washes die down. And at this stage, I'm still really happy with it. I feel like I've got a nice feeling of light in the background. I like the kind of softly, soft edged um, kind of windows and doors and all of that sort of thing. So my edges are working. I felt like my tones were working. I already know that the composition and the drawing is good and I'm liking the color. So at this point, it's all feeling good. I get quite caught up in the water trying to get the reflection and things, but overall I'm liking it. It's got the kind of feeling that I want. I've got the darks reflecting from the darks in the buildings. The whole thing is feeling good. I've managed to trap lots of bright lights on the person and on the gondola. And what I'm trying to do here is link a lot of the washes together. So if we've got washes of similar tone, I'm looking to link them together. So the middle ground water into the gondola, down into the foreground water. Still really happy with it at this point. Um, and it's kind of slowly coming together. I'm starting to get the really deep darks in there. And I think this is when I start to see the issues that I'm having and start to get a sense that it's not gonna work. And I also have really, really struggled with this foreground area and basically have absolutely no idea what to do with that. I'm trying everything and it's just not working. And what you should now see is that the background buildings feel really wishy-washy, especially now we've got a deep dark in, but also especially because they've now dried off. They've dried much, much lighter than I was hoping and we've completely lost that lovely, rich, strong feeling of shadow. The water in the middle has also done the same, so I didn't go dark enough with my tones, I didn't go strong enough with my paint consistency. I was too caught up in trying to get all the little details and get the reflections. I forgot to think about my tonal values, which are the thing that underpin everything. 
So it basically become a bit of a homogenous kind of washed out mess that was not nice to look at. I tried to rescue it by putting the lovely deep darks in and I felt like that was kind of bringing it to life a bit more but still it just wasn't holding together as a whole painting. Those darks were standing out too much, it was making the whole thing look kind of fractured and messy. The only bit I liked at this stage was the bit on the left hand side. But at this point I still liked the composition. I'll talk about that in a minute. I still liked the drawing, I felt like it was accurate. I liked the colours and I had lots of soft edges. So that only left the other thing which was tone and I was slowly starting to realise here that it was my tonal values that were letting me down, my shadows were not deep enough, therefore I had not trapped the light. A few other little issues like I'd let too much of the darker colour bleed up into this really important shot of light shooting through the middle of the painting, so that was also tone related. Essentially I'd killed my light in that area and not gone dark enough elsewhere so I took a nice big broad brush and completely washed over the background buildings, especially the one on the right hand side, really strengthened the tone of the water, tried to put some deeper darks back into it while it was still wet and then really really strengthened the tone of this foreground area and drop in some deep darks and to be fair that really brought the painting to life, it suddenly made the light appear but it was a little bit too late and a little bit overworked so let's have a look at the conclusion now. Okay, so let's use our five principles of painting from the previous videos to kind of analyse this uh, and why it hasn't worked. And most importantly, what can I learn from that and take forward into my next painting? So all the way through this, I was perfectly happy with my drawing. So that's the second principle from the previous videos. Uh, the perspective was good, I felt like the proportion of the person was good. And actually even at the end, the drawing aspect of this, the draftsmanship, I'm still perfectly happy with. So that's kind of a tip there, that's fine in this case. In the big video though, um, where, I, where I introduce the five principles of painting, I talk about the most important one being composition, because if that's not right, you're always going to struggle with the painting, you're never going to be happy with it. And sure enough, I did not take my own advice here. It's actually the composition that kind of lets this down to a large extent. And this is something while I was painting, because this was a live stream, one of my patrons pointed out, was that maybe there's simply too much water in the foreground. And that is the case, the composition is not working and that's why I was never quite happy with it, always trying things out, always frustrated with it. The gondola and the, the, the person are too much in the middle of the painting and there's too much space in the foreground in this case. There's not always a bad thing to have lots of space but here it simply doesn't work. So number one, the composition was off and I should have thought about this more at the start but we can solve that by chopping the bottom off. The joys of working on paper. So for me, I instantly feel happier about that composition. It's much more the focal point on that kind of intersection of the thirds or the five eighths kind of principle. So that's our composition sorted, our drawing is sorted. Um, in terms of the story, which these were the two kind of lesser points, almost like six and seven, I like the story of the piece. The story is that the light is interesting and we have a lone kind of gondola floating through Venice. That's fairly simple. We come back to texture. So um, the edges as well. Let's talk about all the things that are actually working. So for me, I actually really like all the variety of edges. We've got nice, sharp, hard lights. Um, hitting the architecture, hitting the person, hitting the gondola, shooting through in the background and then we've got kind of softer and lost edges in the shadows and some really fuzzy areas so we've got a nice contrast of different edges. Um, the person and the gondola are a contrast of light against dark and dark against light so we've got a nice bit of counter change. So all of that kind of works from an edge point of view. Um, I really love the colours, I actually realised I could go a lot stronger in colour than I thought in my scenes. I don't struggle with colour going big and bold in my birds, but I sometimes go a little bit dull and subdued in my landscapes and my scenes for my personal taste. Uh, the colour looks a bit muddy in the background areas, but that's more down to the texture of the paint, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. So now we're kind of drifting into why this didn't work during the painting, which was partly the composition, uh, and also why for me it doesn't work as a finished painting at the end. And this is down to initially the tonal values were clearly the big problem while I was painting. I simply did not go dark enough. I wasn't bold enough with my darks and strong enough with my consistency of paint in the background architecture 
and also in the water and therefore it went really kind of wishy-washy it didn't have any contrast it didn't have any feeling of light and it felt a bit messy and that was the thing that was the thing that stopped this from working when I went through my my checklist so moving forward into a new painting and moving forward on the whole I must remember to go darker and stronger with my mid-tones and my um, shadows if I want to really bring out the light. Don't be scared to go darker than you think. And we know that colours dry a little bit lighter anyway. So that really was the big thing here. Some of the small points which kind of fit in with tone a little bit. Uh, I really struggled to get the tone right of the, the person pushing the gondola and um, so that ended up being overworked and also the light shooting through the middle of the painting which is almost the most important thing because it shoots across the water hits the person in the gondola and then hits the architecture on the left side tonally on the whole it was light enough but I wasn't careful enough with my edges and I let some of the dark paint in the foreground bleed into this very very important light area so I killed the light tone there and my only way to get it back was to lift out pigment and use some opaque gouache which I try not to do too much and as a result it meant that area become overworked which brings us on to the final point which for why me this doesn't work is because not only are some of the colours in the background a little bit muddy but also I kept having to put on layer upon layer on my areas of shadow because I wasn't being bold and courageous enough and therefore it's got too many layers and it's got an overworked look and for me the colours look a little bit dead certainly in person it doesn't maybe come across in the photo um, and that kind of feeds back into the texture the, this other point of the principles of painting is that the texture of the paint has gone overworked and dull and it's all a bit too heavy so those are all of the things that didn't work during the painting and also did work and then why it hasn't worked as a final piece but most importantly what can I learn from that and take into my new painting and just to finish on a high what are the things that I did like I really liked the way that I managed to capture the perspective I felt like my drawing in this was kind of loose but accurate which is always something I'm aiming for I was really really happy with the left hand side building it's exactly what I'm aiming for with my watercolors kind of abstract nice and loose but it's still got a sense of light there's kind of transparency there um, I did like the way that I painted the gondola itself uh, with the way the light was hitting it and I left managed to leave some nice lights and although it took me a while to get there and if we ignore kind of the colours and the, the overworkedness of the paint I do actually really like the kind of the contrast and the strength of tone in here and therefore the lovely bright light that it kind of gives. So there we go guys, I hope you got something out of that, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it made some sort of sense. Do be sure to hop back and check out the previous five principles of painting and I'm going to use that to kind of analyse and look at other paintings down the line. So it can be a really useful system to kind of analyse our painting before, during and after as we want to move forward with our work. Please do consider subscribing, likes and comments really help me out and if you know anyone who may enjoy this and get something out of it, please feel free to share. All of the links to my social media, my podcast page, my Patreon page in the links below. Until next time guys, happy painting and I will see you soon.